Uh, now moving on to our final topic. Um, Steve, you take this one away. We're going to be talking about the gaming events um, that you'd like to attend or see, either in person or digital. I mean, let's be real here. At least in North America, we're not going anywhere. We're not going to any expos <laughs> this year. Yeah. Let's, just, let's just be honest with ourselves. So, I mean, as much as I would love to create a, a fantasy where I'm going to E3 this year, probably not going to happen. Um, same with like PAX and, and all that. So I, I would love to see a more refined digital expo um, akin to like what Jeff Keighley did with Summer Games Fest. Obviously, that didn't go off with without a hitch. I think a lot of people had very valid criticisms of how that you know, was unrolled uh, over the course of what felt like forever, <laughs> right? Um, like, <laughs> like I, I feel like on paper, it was a good idea to give everyone like a spotlight to show off their games and everything. But especially for, for me, who, who covers video games, it was so hard to keep up with because something would just pop in uh, on the calendar or something would like get postponed. It was it was such a absolute mess to keep up with what the announcements were, who's holding a, a conference when. I, I I would love for if Jeff Keel is going to do this again, and I kind of hope he does because I think he's really good at what he does. Uh, I would love him to just refine the entire process, keep it to a week, keep it to what E three is in spirit, mm-hmm. get yeah. all the major players involved, and actually you know knock this out of the park. Because I mean, a lot of people, even if you know, people overseas are going to expos. They're not going to expos of, you know, the magnitude of a E3 or a Gamescom or something like that. Mm. I think a lot of people are now in the position where they're just kind of like, okay, we're going to be doing digital expos. And we kind of talked about this before where all these major publishers could just do go out and do their own thing now. They're not abided by what E3 wants or what even PlayStation or Xbox wants, they could just go out and do their own thing. But Mm -hmm. I hope that they stick to a more refined process where it doesn't feel like they're just wasting everyone's time. You know, an hour long presentation to get out maybe two or three high profile games with seven, you know, seven games that belong in a blog post just doesn't cut it. I feel like you gotta, you gotta appreciate the viewer's time and especially the media's time as well, because what are the people covering these these events and these games, we got to have that moment where we're like, okay, that's the game we're going to be talking about. That's the game we're going to be putting our focus on, not Mm -hmm. 10 games at a time. Like that's too much. And no game gets the proper appreciation that way. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I I absolutely agree. Summer Game Fest was like, I love Jeff Keighley. He did a great job at the Game Awards, but Summer Game Fest was a disaster. I have I don't think anyone here or anybody watching at home can name me one exclusive announcement of note from Summer Game Fest. And you know what? I feel like a part of the <laughs> lack of, you know, the um, failure that it kind of was, I, I I want to attribute that to the fact that it was one of the earlier events that happened in the right. year. Yes. Right? right when yes. Lo- lockdown was happening, the world was getting news that, you know, of the cases of the pandemic, it was becoming much more of a thing, a reality for a lot of people. So I feel like it was very difficult for uh, Jeff to kind of get people's attention, especially for that prolonged time. But Mm -hmm. now that we have that experience, now that we know we're going into a year that probably will have us indoors for majority of it, I do want to see a lot of these conferences, whether it is Summer Game Fest, um, now that it's going to be a thing, but even E3, come out and say that they're doing a digital conference right yeah. off of that instead of prolonging things. Um, I understand like a lot of conferences are trying to make money, trying to get business, trying to have people um, gather in person. But I think these companies need to start making decisions on what they want to do and that will have them at a better perspective to understand how to execute their events, yeah. right? Yep. Because yeah. whenever they're going along the cusp of like, it may be happening in person, it may not be, then you have no solid plans on how a digital event will look like. You can't yeah. prepare for announcements to happen if you're expecting them to happen in person, right? Um, yeah. So I really hope for that. I, I know for myself, um, I was trying to stay really optimistic. I just want to go to Super Nintendo Land. I know that <laughs> will not happen this year. But if you are <laughs> going to Super Nintendo Land or you live in Japan, please just mail me a box of the peach popcorn. I'm curious. What does that ah. taste like? I, I just want to know. 
give me a little piece of Super Nintendo <laughs> Land. That's it. That, that's I'm coming off my Apple box. That's that's me. <laughs> I'm I'm really hoping that uh, Digital BlizzCon does well. Uh, I kind of skipped over this because I'm not really excited for it as much as it pains me to say, but Overwatch 2, we've been waiting for it forever. It's, it's, I got to play it. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I got to play it at BlizzCon last year. What? Yeah, what? The, the new game mode, awful. But I will say the new character redesign feels a lot better. The, the characters don't take up as much space on the screen and their animations feel intentional. Um, okay, and cool. they they almost have like a sleeker modern look. Um, the only big question that I have for it is like, what are they going to do with the previous Overwatch, Overwatch mm -hmm. Two, and going into their esports scene? Because if we're being honest, Blizzard has had an awful track record of supporting their esports. It mm -hmm. they they don't last more than five years and then they die off. So I want to see is Overwatch Two the revitalization of you know Overwatch esports or is this kind of just like another installment? And then also to PlayStation Experience, I just want I just want a full on PlayStation conference where they just give us all the goods, all the announcements, all the teasers, and try to outshine Xbox because Xbox has a has a lot uh, that they can pull out and kind of sweep the legs out from PlayStation. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I agree on that, Malik. I would like to see another PlayStation experience. I'd love to see some a new Xbox showcase and just to show whatever they got coming uh, in the pipeline. Maybe see a little more from Perfect Dark if we're seeing something yeah. from Xbox. Uh, a little more from Halo. Um, and then on the PlayStation side of things, you know, we talked earlier about a potential Spider-Man Two announcement. Maybe a, a full-on kind of reveal trailer that actually shows us some stuff from God of War Ragnarok. Uh, get a little more out of Horizon Two, that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm in the same. I, I just want to. I would love in in a perfect world where everyone wore a mask, and in six months' time we'd all be good to go. I would love to attend E3 this year. I miss that convention so much. I am like dying to go to another E3. That is like it is definitely the busiest time of the year, but. It's so much fun getting to like see all my friends that I know online or just, you know, going to after parties, hanging out with people, going to the like seeing the convention, seeing all the crazy like booths that are that are made there. Like it's just it's such such a good time. Um, but that's probably not going to happen. So I guess as a substitute, I would love that if we got a digital E3 in some way, that would be nice. Kind of bring back that that fun, you know, that one week period where they're just nonstop crazy announcements and things to talk about within the games industry. That would be great, but uh, we'll see if it happens because they said they were going to maybe do something like that last year after they canceled E3 and then they just never did. So yeah. I don't know. I know it will be interesting to see um, if E3 could kind of rally to do a digital conference just because um, we know a lot of publishers, a lot of studios, um, devs, they're just not so confident in the conference, as I mentioned before. Right. Mm -hmm. So what would a digital E3 look like if you have a, not a lot of companies attending? Right, yeah. right. If you don't have the big three, what are you? Because, I mean, the big three kind of are doing their own you know they kind of exactly. are going to do their own conferences they have the infrastructure built up for it and i think that's one thing that e3 kind of missed out on last year is not putting something together they they yeah. missed out on not doing like they didn't do anything so at that point you got you know summer games says even though it didn't go off the way that jeff Keeley probably planned it's still in our minds it's still fresh you know what i mean like we still remember that that event did happen so yeah. i think that e3 if we don't want E3 to die, as, as morbid as that sounds. They got to do something this year to keep people's attention and stay relevant. Absolutely. <laughs> Sorry, I was just going to say, it also brings up the question, like, does anyone even need E3 from a publisher or a, a development studio's perspective anymore? Because as last year proved, you could just do a digital conference. Yeah. Like, other than exposure, like what does E three really gain these these studios at this point? Like if mm -hmm. it's all digital, a lot of these don't need the exposure. Like, and I think that's getting anything from E three. You're absolutely right, I, and I think that's the uphill battle for E three to find what they could offer these publishers to have those exclusive announcements done 
at whatever E3 digital conference would be or look like. Um, just because I feel like, you know, I don't want E3 to die. It has such a longstanding legacy. You know, people mm -hmm. outside of gaming, when you mention E3, they know what E3 is, right? Um, I remember as a kid watching the news come out from E3 and dreaming of being there to then one day being there. So I feel like the community should kind of work together to kind of help E3 happen. But that could only happen if, you know, the people behind it reach out to some of these content creators maybe in the community and have them a part of the show and also reach out to the developers as well. Right. Where yeah. maybe that's what it is for E3. Maybe it is about the community. Yeah, I just, I wish we would have seen a little bit more innovation from them, uh, you know, for kind of what was the, the industry leading standard of gaming conventions. It, it does seem a little bit lackluster that they didn't try to innovate and do something new. Um, with all the technology that we have, and especially with how much of a hub California is in Silicon Valley, it, it's slightly disappointing that they didn't try to push the boundaries at least a little bit. Yeah. Like even if even if you do something that's not successful and veers from the traditional format, do something at least that's new. Because I mean, they could give these indie games and a lot of like these smaller publishers a lot of exposure. But then again, I don't think E3 would get the traction that it was looking for. I don't think it's like on brand per se for that. I'll pose a question and let me know if I'm just spinning nonsense here. But do you think that maybe? they didn't do a digital conference or maybe they're not ever going to because they're almost scared of how well it will do in comparison to them spending all the money that they do on throwing the actual event live and yeah. that it will put them in a position where they're like, well, how do we even justify now putting any money in actually doing this like IRL, you know, right. do but you I think that that could play a factor? I feel like it plays a factor or it played a factor last year because they were one of those conferences that kept prolonging the fact that it was canceled. Um, they kept wanting to have it happen. And that might have been because they already had these contracts with the L.A. Convention Center um, to put on the conference and like mm -hmm. you know, prepped all these vendors to help make that happen. But in terms of an in-person event, um, being less successful than a full digital event, I feel like that's kind of living in the past. That's a dated fear um, because they work they work together. They could work together cohesively, right? And I feel like that's where E3 should have been going. And they kind of doing that when you're in person at the conference. They also have their E3 show, but they need to go full out and have that like it's a real lost opportunity here if they don't have a full mm -hmm. digital uh conference because that doesn't mean that they can't have an in-person conference i feel like that's such a stupid argument that a lot of people in suits make um because they don't necessarily understand the space they're just looking at the numbers of views right right i mean blizzard blizzard's done it well they have the virtual yeah. conference ticket where you have to pay to watch you know these different right. conferences and everything going on and then you know blizzcon was my first gaming convention last year or god i keep forgetting it's 2021 2019 when i went um it, it was an amazing experience i mean they had their whole esports uh stadium set up and then there was you could play a variety of games and just talking to people and hearing their enthusiasm about the games that were present and then like you said you know getting to meet people and the after parties and getting to network and, and getting excited about games with people who are also excited about the same game as you that's something you can't convey over the internet and in a digital conference i think that that especially if anything going out of this pandemic people are going to e be even more in need of that in-person event it's going to sell even better than any previous years and i will stand by that Mm. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't disagree, but I, going back to, to what Caboose brought up, I do think that there is some sort of a worry of being like, well, we're going to offer this massive audience all this free content, and then how do we get them to come back um, for a premium? I think that's the thing is like, we then they have to transition to, we have to charge these same people after we gave them free access to these conferences and mm -hmm. these events. Right. Uh, and especially at the time when, you know, we're just coming off the years when E3 hasn't been in the best limelight. Um, I think that's definitely one of the reasons why 
they just decide to take like a backseat and maybe decide to take another backseat this year. Yeah, I really hope they don't take a backseat. Um, but you know what? We're going to take a backseat because that's it for today's episode <laughs> of the Squadcast. Great transition. Um, <laughs> for you guys at home, thank you guys so much for watching. Please let us know what you're looking forward to in 2021, be it games, be it events, gaming news, or trends that we haven't uh, talked about here. And let your voice be heard uh, through Twitter, at Squad State, as well as um, right in chat, where we're back next week talking all the good stuff. Malik, thank you so much for joining us. I know over uh, right before we went on break and coming back now, it really feels like you're a part of the squad. And you are because you're one of the writers on our website. What do you have coming to the website? Uh, a lot of uh, Genshin Impact guides. Uh, probably, I just picked up Escape from Tarkov, so probably going to be trying to get some content up on that. It's super hard. Loving it, hating it, it's the full experience. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll have some more articles uh, up on that. But other than that, you can follow me uh, on Twitter, at Malik Shelp, uh, for all of the latest stuff I post on there quite frequently. Nice. Thank you. And Steve, I know you're writing for the website as well, squadstate.com. What do you have coming? To be honest, I'm I'm trying to just get through this Monday. I'm I'm getting <laughs> all honesty. Like I was like, okay, I got the podcast. I'm good for the, I'm good to go. Other than that, we'll we'll see. Uh, you can you can follow me on Twitter at svigvari. I'm sure I'm gonna have stuff up uh, in the immediate future, but just one day at a time after two weeks away. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't blame you. I completely feel that. Uh, Take your time getting back to usual. I'm going to be looking out for whatever articles that you have coming up. Hopefully, like whenever Nintendo releases some, you know, Zelda news, you'll you'll be posting it up on the website. I'll make you proud. (laughs) Thank you, thank you. And remember, at home, you could check out any of those articles um, that Malik's going to be working on: Genshin Impact, Escape from Tarhoth, um, at SquadState.com. Now, Caboose. We're back for a new year. What do you have going on? Uh, pretty much just counting down until some more Avengers DLC uh, and some more Gotham Knights news and as well some news about that Mortal Kombat movie. We're going to get a trailer at some point, so I want to see what that movie's looking like. Uh, and just having a good time, you know, being here on the Squadcast every single week, every Monday. I'm hanging out with you guys, so that's good. And uh, just like Steve said, taking it one day at a time, you know, just... Uh, Trying, still trying to land on my feet after two weeks off, you know. <laughs> so Fair we're enough. just, uh, we're just chilling. We're just vibing, waiting on some, uh, some announcements soon that'll hopefully be coming soon. Um, and besides that, you can check me out: YouTube.com/slash/caboose, Twitch.tv/slash/caboose, Twitter and Instagram at caboose ek. Nice. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna take it one day at a time as well. Probably play Spider-Man Miles Morales for the fourth time. Nice. <laughs> as well go. as try to play through Cyberpunk without my game crashing. Um, but that's pretty much me and being back here every week with you guys um, and you guys at home. So you can check me out at this is Camco on Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff. But really, just check out at squadstate.com so you know what's going on in the squad verse uh for now we're gonna take that back seat and we will see you next week thank you guys so much for joining us bye